35 minutes after the hour now, and it's time for In Session. King 5 is following all the action in Olympia as the legislative session is underway. Steve Bunin and Drew Mickelson have an update about what's going on. Thank you. Yeah, we love delving into state politics every Sunday morning, taking you in session with Drew Mickelson, our South Bureau Chief from Olympia. So, Drew, we're kind of at a halfway point or getting near it anyway in the uh, the session. Oh, I know lawmakers are always trying to jam some heavy topics into the calendar. What would you say was the biggest of this past week? Well, it's 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 really hard to pin down one. They they had some late nights, uh, some some long days for sure. And another week, another new tax proposal as well. This one is a sweetened beverage tax. It would be, be basically like the one that you currently have up in Seattle where anyone who buys a sugary soda or juice drink would pay 1.75 cents for every ounce of that beverage. Think about 20 cents for a can of Coke. Some floor action, which means these bills are, are, are alive and well. The Senate passed a bill to ban the open carry of firearms within 250 feet of any demonstrations and anywhere on the state capitol campus. We've been talking about that one, and we'll see what the House ends up doing with that bill. We stand united! Some police accountability bills also passed off the floor of the Senate, including one that would reprimand officers who act inappropriately. Hands up! And a bill to require Fellow officers report police misconduct when they see it. A House bill banning chokeholds and the use of unleashed police dogs is expected to come up for debate soon. And then there was a bill that passed off the floor of the House, which would automatically restore voting rights for anyone who is convicted of a felony as long as they have served their time. And this comes as a result of the state's first ex-inmate who is now a state legislator. I am an example of the problem but also of the solution. As a young woman, I was convicted. I've served my time in prison. My voting rights were taken away and I got out and I've done everything that I'm supposed to do to reenter our community. All right, now every year there are some political surprises and the state Supreme Court, I would say provided one this week about drug possession cases. Yeah, you know, sometimes it's a, a natural disaster or something that happens uh, nationally that, that lawmakers have to react to. But this was is sort of a bombshell that came out of the state's Supreme Court on Thursday, essentially throwing out the state's drug possession law. It's a felony right now, or at least it was, to possess drugs in the state of Washington. But because of some of the wording of the law, it was ruled unconstitutional. So agencies like the Seattle Police Department and Pierce County Sheriff's Office say they no longer will arrest anyone solely on drug possession charges. This law could be rewritten or fixed by lawmakers. It's not clear that they will do that though this year. This is an issue that surprised and concerned folks on both sides of the aisle here. This is not in the best interest, I would argue, for the people of the state of Washington. It's heartbreaking. We, we have a heart for those who are suffering from addiction, absolutely, but there's not the infrastructure existing out there currently in order to get them the help that they need, if they're even willing to get help. So we're very concerned today. So as you know, Drew, 20 years ago today, Olympia, pretty close to the epicenter of the 2001 Nisqually earthquake. We know the Capitol suffered some serious damage. What is your memory of that day, that moment? Well, I was working in TV news, but down in Portland, and I felt it. I mean, 100 miles south, we felt it. They dispatched me to come up here to the Capitol and ended up spending a few days with this as a backdrop. That Capitol dome actually lifted and rotated about a three quarters of an inch causing a lot of damage. You may have seen the pictures. You may remember the pictures. Uh, they, there was talk for years of retrofitting this place, but it took that earthquake to actually get lawmakers to act on that. And they ended up spending more than $100 million. And they claim it can now withstand an 8.2 earthquake. Hopefully we won't have to find out if that's true or not. Yeah, no kidding. All right, so you got the Golden Globes tonight on uh, NBC, and I asked Chuck Todd uh, earlier when we did a, a, an interview with him on, on Friday what he was, he and his wife said they love Nomadland the most. I haven't seen that yet, but my favorite probably Sound of Metal and Trial of the Chicago 7. How about you and the Mickelson clan? What would you say is your favorite either movie or TV show you've seen this year? Well, TV shows were big Chits Creek fans, so I guarantee we're rooting for that. People make recognize my face. But the other one, it's, it's best actor, Sasha Baron Cohen, for his Borat oh, yeah. subsequent sequel. He shot it here on the Capitol campus. One of the memorable scenes was when he was posing as a Trump supporter. Not everyone thought it was funny that day or later, but uh, I guess we'll see if it's uh, award-worthy. But I'd love to get a little shout-out for Olympia there. 
Yeah, he was great in that movie, but even better, I would say, in the Chicago tri trial of the Chicago yeah. 7. Uh, but we're going to be watching together the Golden Globes tonight on uh, King 5. They get a little plug, and we get to uh, root for Schitt's Creek together. All right, great stuff, Drew. We'll talk to you again in session next week.